So I'm here with uh, Pompey, my grandpa. He was an F-86 pilot in Korea and then flew a little bit after the war and has been flying quite some time. So uh, we're here at uh, Skylink Aviation Services. We got a 172 we took up today. Uh, very bumpy ride we had today. Yeah, very bumpy. Uh, you can probably hear the wind gusts, but we took uh, did an arch tour, did a couple uh, couple loops around the arch. Didn't fly under it, unfortunately, but uh, had a good time. What do you think, Bobby? Excellent. Great movie. What? 
That was a good landing. Thanks. So it was at this point that I realized I had an issue with my comm system. Here you can see I'm fiddling with all the knobs and I was trying to troubleshoot it, but the problem was this aircraft comm stack hadn't been updated since 1969 when it was manufactured. And what I'm trying to do here is contact St. Louis Approach and get cleared into the Bravo airspace for the arch. Did you hear any of that? No. So the other interesting thing is that I wasn't hearing anything uh, on the frequency. So not only could I not speak and hear myself, I couldn't hear anyone else talking. And it's a Bravo airspace, so I definitely should have heard other traffic. I double checked the frequency and it was right. So I spent the next 60 seconds trying to aviate in this moderate turbulence and troubleshoot the problem, which is what you can see here sped up. So I'm not getting anybody on St. Louis approach, um, and it's pretty bumpy. Yeah, better not go in there. Yeah. 126.0, let's see if I can get anybody on that. So it was at this point that my audio recording also failed, uh, and it didn't seem to be related to the comm system issue because I was able to restart the recording later. I think it was just a, a separate issue, um, but we get that back in a few minutes. And there I threw the magic switch and the problem was solved and I was picking up ATC audio again. So I assumed if I could hear them, I could probably be able to talk to them. And here you can see me talking to St. Louis Approach. Obviously you can't hear it because my audio recording failed, but I was uh, informing them my position and uh, giving them my request uh, to enter their Bravo airspace. So it was a pretty stressful first 20 minutes of the flight, um, flying with an unfamiliar aircraft and uh, in moderate turbulence, troubleshooting an issue. Um, but all in all, once we got the issue squared away, we didn't have any other comms problem the rest of the flight. The biggest lesson here is regardless of how many times or how many different 172s you've flown, and regardless if the guy renting you the aircraft says, no, it's fine, take it up, you always want to go up with the instructor and fly the aircraft because each aircraft has its own idiosyncrasies and quirks that you might not be aware of. Here we are approaching downtown St. Louis in the beautiful arch, which is the main goal of today's flight. And we're gonna go ahead and take three passes at it. So we're gonna fly south over the Mississippi River, make a turn back northbound to seat out the other window, and finally turn back south over the Mississippi and uh, seat out that right-hand window one more time.
recording of the first half of the flight failed, uh, which is okay, but so here we are. Thanks for joining me. This is the Desert Pilot. I've got my grandpa here. I'll call him Poppy. Steve, he uh, was an F-86 pilot during Korea and a ferry pilot afterwards, and we just uh, finished the Arch Tour. Uh, had quite the experience renting the airplane this morning from uh, an, an 84-year-old flight instructor, very nice man. And, uh, yeah, had some issues with the comms and the transponder, but we're mostly screwed away here. If we look down on the right, that's the Budweiser factory. Downtown Tower, Cessna 51827 is uh, nine miles to the northeast with Whiskey. Uh, request full stop, runway 23 if able. Cessna 51827, Downtown Tower, proceed inbound, report a two mile final, runway 23. Two mile final, 23827. Another fun thing about this airplane, there's no, uh, no radio comms to the yoke, so I gotta use a handy uh, hand mic here. So. We really are in 1969, which is the year this specific aircraft is manufactured. Look at all the barges in the river. This top system is... oh. Yeah, it's horrible. Well... It was cheap. <laughs> Okay, we gotta watch out for that tower there and tower there. What tower? There's a tower, like a radio tower there and a radio tower there. That's why I have my medical, I can see. Downtown Tower, Skyhawk 37 Julia, it's clear airspace. Thanks for the help this morning. Skyhawk 37 Julia, Roger. Frequency change approved. Have a good day. Frequency change approved. Good day. 37 Julia. Alright, well, we're going to shoot between these towers here. So you see the one straight ahead? It's what that's flashing at us. And then we got these three, so we're going to just go between them. Oh, these? Oh. Yeah, there's three here, and there's one straight ahead of us. But we got quite a ways before that one. When the weather's like this, I mean, when the puppy like this, you don't get a chance to, to relax. Yeah. No, yeah, you're always... Yeah. On, like, cruise flights in Arizona, I'm like, let go of it. It's trimmed, you don't have to put your hands on it, you're fine, but... Yeah, that's fun. It's, yeah. It's the Midwest for you. Uh, 2737 Julia, that is about six miles uh, southeast of your airspace under the 3,000 foot butter shelf. Uh, request transition to your airspace uh, in this uh, clockwise tour under the 3,000 shelf. Our 2737 Juliet Spirit uh, Tower, good afternoon. Sir, you were trying to transition uh, which direction? Uh, northbound for St. Charles for 37 Juliet. Right, number 2737 Juliet, uh, transition through Spirit Class Delta Airspace approved Spirit Altimeter 3000. 000, 2000, 000, 3000, Juliet. And over 2737 Juliet, are you a negative transponder? Uh, Spirit Tower 37 Juliet, uh, yeah, having some issues with transponder, couldn't get approached to see it, so we've been troubleshooting at this point. Okay, and you're about 8 southeast of Spirit, correct? Affirmative, and uh, about 1,900 on the altitude. Thank you very much for that, sir.
Charles County traffic, Cessna 737, Whiskey, Quebec, departing, taking off runway zero, runway 18, close traffic, left close traffic. Hey, Jeff, it's uh, 27370, that is about two miles southwest, uh, cancel off the flight of the field, gonna join a right-hand pattern uh, downwind for runway 18, St. Charles traffic. Central traffic, 855, cross runway 18. Two seventy is turning base uh, uh, for runway 18. St. Charles traffic. St. Charles traffic, 855, taking off runway 18, departing to the north. St. Charles County traffic, 737, which people back to run left cross one one eight. Sullivan, traffic, citation 510, Whiskey Charlie, enter left down, wind runway 24, Sullivan. 270 is turning final for uh, St. Charles traffic. 270 is turning final, runway 18. St. Charles County traffic, 737, Whiskey Charlie, left down, wind 18, traffic is delayed, one final. Charles County traffic, 7 West Key, Quebec is left base, runway 18. A cool pilot, Michael. Oh, God, that was a terrible landing. I'm sorry. Terrible landing. You recovered pretty quick. What? You recovered very well. Thank you. That was... Woo! 37 Juliet, it's clear of uh, runway 18, St. Charles traffic. Okay, let's just take a breath for a second here. This was such a special flight for me. I was so excited to take my grandpa flying. You know, he's an F-86 pilot in Korea and really hasn't flown in almost 60 years. So it was really fun to get him back in the cockpit and share a passion that we both have uh, in aviation. And it was also just such a cool flight to go see the arch from this viewpoint. You know, it was a pretty turbulent day, not something I'm used to here in the beautiful Southwest, uh, but it was lots of fun. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any comments, leave them below. And if you like the video, share it with somebody and don't forget to subscribe.